uh, group since college, I don't think. So, and I kind of feel like a fat Steve Jobs with this headset on. So, um, yeah, bear with me. So, Uinta, not Unita, not Unita, not Winta. My dad calls it that still. Um, funny story, he, I, he still doesn't know how to pronounce it. So, I was sitting there drinking with him, and he's like, hey, uh, you got any of those uh, Winta beers? I'm like, no, Dad, no, it's Uinta, like our Uinta craft beer. And he's like, well, yeah, I am. What do you have? <laughs> Fucking dad joke. So, yeah, Uinta. So, named after the Uinta, Uinta mountain range in the Rockies, goes east to west. It's the only one in the continental United States that does so, um, which is named after the Ute Indians that used to live in the area. <clears throat> used to live in the area. So, the story goes that uh, Will Heller and Del Vance both went to the patent office in 1993. And they went in, and uh, Will wanted to name the brewery Great Basin Brewing. So he goes to the patent office, says, hey, can I like to this out. She's like, well, no, it's already taken by a brewery in Reno. And uh, she's like, but there's another guy in here who's looking to start a brewery today too. Or so the legend goes, I don't know if that's true, but maybe. So this is what they tell me at the brewery and kind of give me a wink and a smile. They're like, go back to Illinois and Missouri where you belong. You'll never know the truth. So they, uh, they meet up and they're like, well, We'll name it Uinta Brewing after the mountain range. It's the tallest point in Utah. We like the sounds of it. No one will ever be able to pronounce it. Let's do that. So they did. And uh, it was a distribution-only brewery, no brew pub, none of that good stuff, just kegs, eventually growlers, all in 1993. Another legend has it that while they're waiting for their federal brewery license, Will was waiting by, the, waiting by the phone, finally got it. As soon as the call came in, he's like, all right, you can put the mash in. We're ready to go. Let's do this. So like that, you into brewing was on its feet and, uh, and making some beer. So I think we have some pretty good beers to taste today. Um, kind of going across the spectrum. We got some brand new stuff. We've got some old favorites. Um, Farmside size on. We're going to try tonight. That's brand new this year. Um, we're kind of doing a... Ooh, yeah, good. Beautiful. We'll move on to some Baba afterwards. We're going to do a little bit of a... We're all going to get a little doobied out. Hop over to the detour, and then we have some birthday suit from last year, which uh, I'm really excited about because uh, it's mellowed out quite nicely. So in 96, we started our bottling line. Um, finally kind of had some people stopping by. Mind you, this was all in a mechanic's garage is where we started. Um, not necessarily the best place to brew beer, but it worked. In, uh, in 01, we moved into our current building, which is awesome. It's huge. Do a ton of barrelage now. We, uh, we knew we were going to grow pretty significantly, so... Moved in there, got in there, got the bottling line, put a brew pub together, started doing that. So that was in 96. From 96 to 01 was right before the Olympics. So even more steady growth, 01 to 08, steady growth across the board. Started hitting around 15,000 barrels, broke the top, top 50 breweries craft-wise for barrelage, which back then was about 15,000 to break. Right now it takes about 90,000, I think. Does that sound about right? 90, 100,000 barrels now. So we can kind of see how fast, uh, how fast craft breweries, craft beer has taken off in general. Um, 09, we uh, started our Crooked line, which are these bad boys. The birthday suit, which is our anniversary ale, usually a sour. Um, the one we're going to try is a Plum Abbey Ale. Um, coming up this year, we're going to have a Raspberry Frambois that uh, I'm pretty excited about. Don't know all the details, but uh, should be awesome. Um, and it's just kind of been whatever the, 
whatever the head brewmaster is feeling at the time is usually what he goes with. So there's that. It's when we started getting to barrel aging. Um, our labyrinth uh, quad black is the darkest beer ever made, from what I've been told, slash the record books. So that's one of our claims to fame. But we we're, uh, we're kind of on the forefront of the whole barrel aging process. Um, so yeah, then in 11, we came around and did a full rebrand. And uh, we went Crooked Line, which are these bad boys. We went Organic Line and our Classic Line. So the Classic Line, um, you went to Pale Ale, just came to market. It was cutthroat out in Utah. Um, number two SKU nationwide, it's only been in Utah. We made a gentleman's agreement with Odell Brewing probably... 20 years ago, and we're like, don't worry. You can have the name Cutthroat outside of Utah. We don't want it. We're never going to leave the state. <laughs> Years later, we made, some, uh, we made some pretty decent beer and decided to leave the state. And they were, uh, they were all like, no takesies, backsies. We're keeping Cutthroat. You're on your own. So you went to Pale Ale. One of our classic lines, we also came out with Hopnosh that year, which is our flagship beer, which we're not tasting tonight, but we have some better stuff. So, we all have a farm side in our hand, yes? Cheers. So, I have some notes that I need to read from the brewer because I don't know enough about it. So, Isaac is our head brewer. He's kind of a madman, and uh, he had been wanting to do a wine-slash-beer hybrid for some time. Farmhouse, farm side, sorry, Saison, kind of was his brainchild. Um, white wine must in there, and some gooseberries. So he used uh, Wigner wine grapes, which uh, have a very interesting profile. Spicy with a nice earthiness to it as well. So, put in the grape juice, the, uh, it's pretty much simple sugar at that point, and the Saison yeast ate all that, leaves it with a nice, clean, dry finish. The gooseberries were a mix between him and marketing. Nice pickled berry flavor, just melts really well with the beer overall. Questions? Good? Thumbs? Beautiful. All right. Nice job, Isaac. All right. So. Oh, great. That guy. That a boy. Some exciting news on the Saison front with you as well. We uh, have a cucumber Saison coming out later this year with half of it aged in gin barrels, and I have heard it is awesome. So things to look forward to coming in the following months. Hopefully right around June, nice cucumber, ginny, Saison cocktail of sorts. So, where are we? Oh, no, that's right. All right, so, <sighs> classic line, organic line. Oh, yeah, what's up? I believe it's four. So I'll get into that. There's a reason um, a lot of our base beers are 4%. Baba's base of four, Farmside base of four, um, the pale ale I mentioned, four, extra pale ale, four, goes a four, Utah's a kooky state. So, also the organic line, we pride ourselves on being uh, very uh, environmentally friendly and we know a lot of people love all organic. We have a few people that work there that love it. 
Bob I uses all organic ingredients. Wild uses all organic ingredients. And uh, yeah, so we have the organic line as well, the Goza. Excuse me. And then the crooked line is just kind of the kooky stuff we come up with. So, oh yeah, and then Hopnosh, like I was saying, was kind of the beer that brought us to the national spotlight, really got us out of Utah surrounding states, brought us nationwide, east coast, midwest, far west coast. Um, we came to Missouri last March. Um, been around for a year, so year anniversary, guys. Pretty proud of that. We've made it. We did it. Um, we came out here because it was a good fit. We thought uh, you guys might like our beers. And, uh, yeah. So, kooky Utah beer laws. <sighs> They've mellowed out in time, but I always get questions like, you can brew beer in Utah? Or you can drink beer in Utah? Yes, to all of those, carefully. So on draft, all beer has to be 4%. Yeah, yeah, it's brutal. So there, we have a 4% detour and a 4% doobie kind of a 4% everything, which is a little boring. We sell it in bottles out there as well, but for the most part, that's why we now have a brew house, brew pub, and we have 30 lines, and you better believe they are all 4%. We also have our own private brew pub that doesn't have 4% beer, but no one knows about that, so let's keep it on the DL. Um, so there's that. They, uh, they used to have, right around the Olympics, it was a huge issue. You had to be a member to go into a bar. So obviously tons of tourists come into Utah and Salt Lake for you know, the big celebration. And pretty much all they did to get around it was the bouncer would sit at the door. Someone would come up and they'd say, are you a, are you a member of the bar? No. Will anyone sponsor this gentleman to become a member at the bar? Some guy at the bar, yeah, I got him. He's on mine. And that was it. That's how they got around it. Finally, even, even the natives realized it was a pretty ridiculous law. And roughly 10 years later, they repealed it. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's also the Zion Curtain, which is... Uh, Kind of interesting. You have to make liquor cocktails in restaurants behind a curtain of sorts. They don't want their kids getting ideas and how, f I don't know, I don't know if the guys are spinning bottles or something, like looking really cool. I honestly have no idea. I'm not from there. It's as weird to me as it is to you. And then uh, there was one more that was just really off the cuff. Please. Every kind of beer sign is illegal except for the private clubs uh, that he was talking about. You have to be a member, but you 
can't, you know, some states still have laws about signs, you can't have lighted signs or neons that are facing outside. In Utah, you can't have any kind of sign that, that, that you can see from the outside. So, and they, they don't want the Mormons to be tempted is what it is. And it's really true, that's exactly why. It's like, the reason why they have, have, a, have a sponsor in the bar is because they don't want someone, you know, sneaking away from the temple and going into the, into the, you know, walking into the bar and being like, oh, I'm here, and they drink really fast and they go back to the temple. <laughs> it's probably not happening, but if it is, you know, this was their way of circumventing that because it's like if you didn't know anybody in the bar, then you probably didn't, you know, run with people that hang out in bars. And that was their way of keeping people from being tempted and, you know, swayed into going in and drinking a beer or some kind of cocktail in the bar. So, anyway. That's all. Yeah. You also couldn't, uh, couldn't order beer. I don't, I don't even know. It's insane. Anyway, it, next year, right? Yeah, next beer. So, ha, <laughs> ha, silly Utah. So, next beer, Baba Black Lager, part of the organic line. Uh, one of my personal favorites. Um, organic Hallertau hops in here. Um, just a really nice beer. Um, came to be by, uh, there was kind of a, a beer competition. Guy won. We liked it. Said, we'll put it into production. Snowbird uh, Ski Resort was like, oh yeah, we like that beer. Why don't you make it for us for our Oktoberfest? Said, all right, done. Definitely do that. So make it. Everyone likes it. Everyone at the brewery really likes it. And we're like, oh, we should probably take this nationwide. So and so forth. So we did. So tasting. Nice coffee right up front. A little bit of smoke on the exhale. Just a nice, clean, bitter finish. And uh, yeah, just a really nice beer. We do events every once in a while where, where, eh, where we will uh, soak marshmallows in the baba and do like uh, kind of a s'mores night, and it is fantastic. It's like the perfect campfire beer. I tell that to everyone, or uh, fireplace beer, or house fire beer. I don't know. It doesn't matter. If there, if there's a fire around, you can probably drink one and be pretty happy about it. So, um, yeah, any questions about Baba? Black lager, a little different. Art. Uh, so, on all of our, w wait, pardon, one more time? Okay, so, uh, yeah, like on all of our bottles, it'll say, for instance, herded by, uh, pale ale be caught by, hop nosh is something else. There's a little bit of uh, a different one. It's just our way of saying, this is our beer. That's pretty much it. Yeah? Mm. I'm glad you brought that up. So, you into mountain range, east to west. We like to go west to east. It's we. Uh, we kind of consider ourselves orienteers, if you will. So what that is, it's the, um, it's almost like the game of going out in the country with a map and a compass and kind of forging your own way to the end result. And that's kind of where it comes from. We uh, made the compass bottle, I want to say in 01 when we went into the new building. So uh, yeah, you'll never be lost as long as you have a Uinta beer in your hand. It does. As long as you only have a few of them. <laughs> to the brewery. The brewery. We, we have, I mean, we are the black sheep of the Utah family. Let's be perfectly honest. Um, so how I got started with these guys is I was working for a distributor up in Chicago. Well, any more questions about Baba Black Lager? Anyone not like it? You can be honest. It's not for everyone. Fair enough. 
Yeah. Uh, the hot build is organic hail or tell. And then the malt build is, I believe it's carafe and chocolate. Quiz myself. Quizzing me. Yeah, carafe and uh, organic chocolate. Roasty, I don't know. Isaac's a madman. I don't ask questions, or at least too many of them. I'm just the pretty face on stage. So I let him do God's work and... I get to drink it. Any other questions? Four percent. No. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna delve into some more dangerous stuff shortly. The non Utah drafts, if you will. First one, real low, I want to say right around 15, and I think Baba's in the 30s, 34. I can tell you right now. That's why I have this thing. 32, so close. So, yeah. Um, any more questions? Everyone liking? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So our pale ale in Utah is 4%. Our pale ale out here is 4.4. Um, there's, there's kind of a joke at the brewery like, yes, all of our beers are 4% on that line, but we have the only tester in the state, so maybe they're not, you know? <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. Also, keep this video off the Internet. I've said some... Uh, Pretty, pretty secretive stuff. Um, <laughs> yes, that is exactly what I meant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, black lagers, good, nice stout porter flavors. Without the heaviness of it all, you can drink more than one or two of them. 4%, pretty sessionable. Um, a lot of people like to know how I got involved with the brewery, and I think it's a pretty funny story. I was, uh, I was working for a distributor up in Chicago, and they had a incentive to go to Utah, and I was like, all A, never vacation in Utah ever, because it's weird out there, and... I'm not going to ski ever because I'm from Chicago and our biggest hill is the curb outside of my house. So obviously I won the trip to the chagrin of a lot of people who like to ski and uh, went out there and it was myself, another gentleman who'd never skied. Thank you. Okay, new beer, time out. So Detour Double IPA. Not 4% anymore. A little bit more dangerous. A lot more dangerous. Over twice as dangerous. So, 9.5 on this bad boy. Hot profile is Cascade, Citra, and Bravo. And it is good. So, tropical flavors right on the nose, right on front. Maybe a little pineapple, a little bit of mango. It's going to kind of cool back into almost a melon, cantaloupe. Honeydew, and then just a nice, malty, clean finish on the back end. I lovingly refer to this beer as my stay-at-home six-pack. I don't go out afterwards. I have before, and it was a mistake. Hmm. <laughs> Thoughts, questions, concerns? Thumbs up. Everyone, show of hands. Oh, I see you guys in the middle over there, not showing your hands. Didn't like it, huh? We all have our faults. I understand. Chad, thoughts? I agree. Yeah. 
I think we might have made a few converts with that one, to be perfectly honest. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Cheers, my friend. So, moving on to uh, how I got involved with this beautiful mountaintop company. I was, uh, so yeah, I win, the, I win the trip with a few other guys to go out to Utah, go skiing, which I've never done. Utah, which I would never go. Get out there. I don't ski. I've skied once on pretty much a bunny hill in Wisconsin, which was a nightmare. I think I made it down one time. It's awful. Never go again. But I was like, oh, yeah, I can definitely handle a mountain. <laughs> you see where this story's going. <laughs> Another guy from the south who'd never skied on anything ever. Another guy who'd skied once. Another guy who'd skied once. So we meet up with uh, the West Coast sales manager of Uinta, who moved out to Utah so he could ski all the time. He's like, all right, guys. So we're in the parking lot, kind of putting everything on. He's like, all right, have some beers. And we're like, yeah, this is the best trip ever. We're drinking beers at 10 a.m., going to go skiing. It's like 55 degrees out. So obvious, yeah, it's crazy. It was like right around this time of year, 55 degrees, still snow on the mountain. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm going to be up in the mountains skiing. I better have a shirt on long sleeve shirt, a sweatshirt, a light jacket, and my winter parka. Overkill. So, going there, slamming beers. I look at Joe and I'm like, it's getting pretty hot. I'm wearing a helmet, black. I'm like, uh, I'm like, Joe, should I wear the parka? I'm like, it's a little warm. He's like, no, you're going to want it when we get to the top of the mountain. It's definitely going to be a little bit cooler up there. All right, awesome. So we all go down the bunny hill a couple times. We all fall the first time. The second time we make it down, essentially without incident. And he's like, all right, guys, I think you're ready. I think we're definitely ready to go to the top of the mountain. We're like, oh, yeah. I mean, you seem pretty confident. He's like, oh, yeah, you're definitely good to go. Trust me. All right, I trust you. We're going to go up to this place. It's called the Strawberry Express. I'm like, Strawberry Express? That's going to be so easy. You just saw Slay That Bunny Hill, right? He's like, oh, yeah. So we go up to the top, and it's the nightmare that you're all expecting. I'm definitely afraid of heights, which I forgot about at the base of the mountain. And, uh, yeah, I pretty much look at Joe. I'm like, Joe, this is not strawberry. I'm like, strawberries are like the color of blood. He's like, yeah. Anyway, you should go that way. I'm going this way. All right, cool, on my own. So an hour and a half later, as I roll down the mountain and try to listen to a woman teach her five-year-old how to ski, like trying to listen in, kind of falling, rolling down. They're out of earshot at this point. I'm stranded on the mountain with one ski. Make it back to the bunny hill, the part of the mountain I crushed. Make it down, strip off everything. I'm sweated through to my sweatshirt, can barely breathe because there's no oxygen up there. Like Joe comes over with two beers. He'd gone the, down the mountain twice already. He's like, he's like, man, what took you so long? Also, why are you wearing that parka? I told you to take it off. It's way too hot out for that. I'm like, you son of a bitch. So now he's my boss, <laughs> which is great. I'll never let him live that down. I hope he watches this. Son of a gun. Yeah, I know. Um, that part, not so much. But we went to the bars afterwards, and I'm like, this is kind of weird, but also kind of awesome. I'm like, those mountains are sweet, and your beer is super good, so I want to work for you guys. And I tricked them into it, so they hired me. And that's kind of where we're at. Um, so, yeah. Any more, uh, any questions about the brewery itself? Ooh, I actually have a fun story about the brewery. So... They were telling me this. Um, when the new brewery got put in in 01, um, 
we waited a few years and then put in a 130 barrel browcon system. So we were using a 40 barrel air before, which was our 10,000, 15,000 capacity. Put in the 130. So right now we average probably 108,000 barrels a year. That's what we're on projection for. We can go up to 300,000. So we have the capacity to do a lot of beer. But uh, one of the great ones, our brew deck is absolutely beautiful. Brand new, spanking new. And we had uh, like a dozen German guys come in and build it because they, it's what they do. They're great at it. And they would come up every morning. Like, they would drink in the brewery until like 1 a.m. And then five hours later, they'd be on the brew deck getting ready, like drinking a coffee. And Joe it's like, what the hell are you guys doing? He's like, he's like, I'll be honest, except he said it, and he's like, this is the best brew deck I've ever seen. That's my German impression. God, that was awful. Um, yeah, bad. Not good. So, yeah. Um, pretty awesome brew deck. I highly recommend if you guys ever get a chance to go out to the brewery. It is... Uh, Fantastic. Salt Lake City. I know I've been kind of wisecracking at them, but uh, it's awesome. It's, uh, it's a beautiful town. It's super clean. The outdoors are awesome. I might move out there. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. They changed the laws. I'm, I just might do it. So I'm just waiting. So any questions for me? Why I have this territory and come down to St. Louis and hang out or anything like that. Okay, um, so I did marketing for Jimmy John's for a couple years, and uh, I was like, yeah, I'm kind of bored with this, so I took an outside sales job after that, and uh, <laughs> it was the worst job of all time. So my job was to knock door to door, probably about 50 doors a day, and try and convert FedEx users to UPS. Yes. It's as crazy as it sounds. So I did that, and uh, after about three months, I was like, no way, I'm done. Got a job as a bar back. Um, finally met up with the distributor, and I was like, you know what, you guys can pay me pennies as long as I can get out of this current job that I'm in, because I'm going to end myself if I have to be here any longer. So. Got a job at the distributorship, started, uh, got a sales job in chain sales, won the in, uh, incentive with Uinta, and then, uh, yeah, hopped on there. So it was a long and treacherous road, but I made it through. Now I'm at the promised land, drinking beer for a living. <laughs> so cheers. Thank you. Thank you. I worked really hard at it. So yeah, what else you got? What else you guys got for me? Come on, got something. So we probably go to Salt Lake probably two or three times a year, a melding of the minds, if you will. We just sit around and drink beer. No, I'm kidding. Um, so we go out there, talk sales, hang out, talk more sales. And then it's really, so it's kind of fun I was saying Isaac's kind of the madman behind it all, but it's really nice because we all have input on what we want, you know? So I wouldn't be surprised if we see some nitro in the near future. Um, coming up we have, so I know I've mentioned Hopnosh. Our summer seasonal is going to be a Hopnosh tangerine. I know it's like the flavor of the year, but ours is the best, um, which is the Hopnosh added with citra hops on top of the Galaxy and Chinook, and then... Uh, um, some tangerine puree thrown in, and the sample batch was ridiculous, and I'm super excited for it. Um, got a lot of new stuff coming out this year that we're all really excited about, so we kind of did an, a, a rebranding this year, and uh, so like I was saying before, with the Crooked Line, we uh, have all this stuff. We're like, you know what would be great if we made a Brett line? So we got a bunch of Brett stuff coming out this year. Um, we got a Brett birthday suit IPA, uh, Brett Saison, um, 
one of my favorite beers that we make is our Oak Jacked, which is a bourbon barrel aged pumpkin beer. Clocks in right around 10%. Really tasty. That's getting the Brett treatment, which I'm super excited about. Excuse me. Uh, they might move it to the next building. I'm not entirely sure. I think so. Don't quote me on that. I haven't been out there sub September. And they haven't started the Brett process quite yet. So, uh, yeah, a lot, uh, lot of awesome stuff. A lot of stuff on the docket for next year. And, uh, yeah, it's all just kind of fluid. So, like I was saying, Isaac wanted to do beer-wine hybrid marketing us for like, eh, maybe, you know, throw some gooseberries in there, you know, kind of turn it up a little bit. Sure, done. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's really nice to actually be able to be heard. We're only a company of, I think, I think there's 80 of us nationwide. Um, pretty small, things considered. Um, Salesforce is usually two states. I'm Illinois, Missouri. There's a guy that does all of Texas, which is insane to me. Thank you. Oh, it's all good. Um, all right, so next beer, also high octane. Doobie, one of my personal favorites, named after Utah's Centennial Star, which also happens to be the lead star on the Big Dipper, which you can kind of see. Um, cheers. Falconer's Flight and Bravo hops on there. 101 IBUs. Um, really a nice, nutty, chocolatey backbone on there. And then you still get the nice hop bitterness from all those hops that we throw in. 9.2 on the ABV scale. So, yeah, believe that we don't just make a bunch of fours. Yeah, we don't, uh, and the next one's like a seven, so, um, yeah, in your face. <laughs> um, so, Doobie, also play on that. We, uh, we put in hemp seed with the malt, obviously, of course we do, um, which kind of adds, lends a little bit of a nutty flavor to it, but uh, this is kind of the beer when I do beer samplings that everyone's just like, Holy crap, that is a delicious beer. And they keep coming back, and they're like, hey, those beers were good, but I'm like, do you have tickets? And he's like, no. I'm like, I don't care. Here you go, champ. So, yeah, anyway, thoughts? Good. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Even if you don't like the style, this is kind of a unique style, a really unique style, actually, especially to be a double black IPA. And this is a really, really good example. For those of you that maybe have never had one, there are other ones that aren't all that good. This one is really, really good. Yeah. Yes, sir. They don't tell that secret to anyone. I don't know what they do. I know we had, so when Budweiser bought Goose Island, they obviously wanted to have the Goose IPA everywhere. That was their big push. So they came out to Utah and were like, hey, how do you guys do this? And we're like, we don't. We're not going to tell you. <laughs> Figure it out. You're adults. You can handle it. They did. They found out. I mean, they, they got it done. But um, yeah, so I don't know. They're not going to tell me. No, so bottled beer can be whatever. But uh, you have to buy it through a state-run liquor store, and you have to buy it by the bottle. Um, 
There's a brewery out there, you guys might have heard of them, Epic. They, uh, they don't do draft at all. They just do bottles only, bombers. They said, we're going to make our beer whatever the heck we want to make it. Um, hell to you guys. And uh, yeah, you guys can buy the bombers. So um, that's kind of where the crooked line came in. Big format. You can get a lot of it. Kind of bang for your buck. High octane. And then when we started leaving the state and really expanding, it made sense to package, you know, the doobie, the detour. Yeah, so as long as it's not on draft. So, yeah, draft beer is always going to be 4%, but you can always go to the bar and order a bomber or ask for it in a bottle or anything like that. It's not the same, but it's the same. So, slightly different animal. You, you cross the state line, you'll see it everywhere. It's crazy. So you know, um, I'm trying to think what else we have. Oh, question, question. Yeah, so we try and do as much local as we possibly can, and most everything comes from, I think we get all of our hops from Idaho. Um, on this birthday suit that you guys are going to get shortly, the plums were sourced from Oregon. Apparently, that's where plums are grown. Um, so yeah, we try and get it as local as we can. Um, we do. We're very uh, environmentally focused. So, um, like most, we do uh, give our spent grains to farmers and all that good stuff in the area. We are 100% um, renewable energy. 20% of our energy comes from solar panels on the building. Another 80% comes from uh, wind power that we outsource. So, enough of that. More about this. So, last year's birthday suit, one of my favorites. So I was talking to Isaac about it yesterday. So pardon me while I get out my notes. All right, so this is what the man tells me. He was playing around with an Abbey Belgian recipe, and we had just received some new special or Belgian special bee malt, dark caramel malt, crystal, and uh, it has awesome flavors of fig, date, and toffee. His words, I agree. And uh, we used the Belgian Abbey yeast strain, and Isaac believed that the plum would be a nice fit for the fig, toffee, date, and uh, ran with it. Got some. Uh, uh, ba -ba -ba. uh oh, there we go. Wrong one. Puree from Oregon, like I was saying. And uh, yeah, this is the uh, the final product. So a year underneath it, mellowed out a little bit. But yeah, classic sour. Um, it's one of those ones that. I was sampling it in Springfield, Missouri, and some people loved it. Some people didn't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, it's a classic sour, and they're like, I don't know about that. I'm like, it's what it is. But, hey. 
whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> it was a good time, though. I don't even remember, to be perfectly honest. They don't tell me any of this fun stuff. They're just like, you're fine. You don't need to know. It is an anniversary beer. Okay, then yeah. So, yeah, birthday suit, anniversary beer. We do it, uh, I think we started right around 10 years ago. It's been a sour every year, damn near, and... Uh, yeah, kind of new new takes on it every year. Like I said, Raspberry Fram's coming up soon, um, so that should be out in the next month or so, hopefully. Yes, sir. This is the twenty second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Cheers. <laughs> and we, uh, well, since you guys are a sauerkraut, we have a Goza that just came to market as well. Very nice, more of a traditional style. Um, yeah, enough about that. Let's talk about this.